Hey YouTube, how's it going? Um, apologies, this has been quite a while since my last video. Um, this video isn't the completely working solution, this is just to bring everyone up to speed with the project in its current form. Um, I'll be reviewing a few products that I've used in my new implementation and trying to answer as many questions that people have left um, to try and be as helpful as possible. Um, right, as you've probably noticed, this quadcopter doesn't look anything like the one that was in my last video. Um, that was because I had some concerns over the structure and stability of my last frame, uh, and the build was it was development. It was definitely a development build. It was bits bolted onto bits, bolted onto bits as I added them and developed them. So. Uh, I took the opportunity, now that I knew exactly what was going to go into my quad, to rebuild it, and I'm really happy with the results that have come out now. Uh, starting with the frame. So originally I had an X525 aluminium frame. Um, this was a great starting frame, very light, but I have just come across this, which is even lighter. This is a RC Timer F450 frame. It is made of uh, hard plastics, it's very durable, very light, very solid. It's made up of a uh, aeroform structure. It's very stable. Uh, I've read lots of reviews before purchasing this and they all said that it's very flimsy, very bad, should avoid it at all costs. Well, I like the look of it and I thought I'd take a risk. I bought this one because I knew that it had lots of options and lots of neat features, which I'll get to in a second. But straight out of the packaging, this was a solid frame, and I really do recommend it. Uh, it has lots of neat things built in that that just take into consideration of the person building the quad. Uh, this frame, you could build it, you could use this. I'd recommend it if you're either building your first quad, and even if you've built your one millionth quad, this is a fantastic frame. the The main the main party piece it has is the bottom plate here has a built-in PCB that you can solder your ESCs to and your batteries so you don't have all of this messy wiring running around the inside of of the quad it's you know you can trim your wires to perfect size and it's soldered to here and then the connection to the battery is soldered soldered there too um, this frame, I'd just like to point out, there are similar frames to this, which you've probably already come across. Uh, the DJI Flame Wheel, or the F450, it's usually got two red arms and two white arms. Um, I chose this one just because, one, it was cheaper, and two, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the two-tone colour. I wanted uh, a uniform black frame, so this was perfect. The, the hardest thing I had to do with this frame was trying to find a way of mounting the Arduino to the top of it. In the end I ended up drilling two holes here and, and two holes at the back here and I had a friend who had access to a 3D printer. He very very kindly printed me a bracket that sits between the quad and the frame and everything sits there nice and secure. Uh, going on to the controller itself in the, in the centre here. So the Arduino itself hasn't changed but the way that everything else connects to it has. Originally I had a accelerometer and a gyroscope each on their own PCB and that was soldered to the top and wires thread here there and everywhere and and then I came across this and this is a Arduino built wireless proto shield so this is the, the prototyping shield with an XB module interface built into it so you can plug in your Bluetooth chip here or your XB chip here um, so it's really good for if you're using wireless communications with any of your products. And then you've just got the, pro the prototyping board space at the back. Um, so with mine, I have attached the four connectors to my ESCs, an RGB LED, and in the center there is my new IMU chip. So instead of using two separate chips, one for a gyro, one for accelerometer, I purchased an MPU6050. It's a six degrees of freedom IMU and it comes also with a built-in temperature sensor, a power indicator. Um, very happy with the chip, it's nice and neat, a very small footprint, incredibly light, one chip solution and even better is that on the Arduino website itself is there are libraries for you to use this chip and they are Kalman filters with IMU, um, with IMU libraries 
and it, it helps you straight out of the packaging basically you can plug this on a breadboard and you can download the libraries off the Arduino website and within five minutes you can detect change of movement pitch roll and yaw with this chip it's brilliant I really do recommend these these products if you are following this build um, I will try and put links to parts in the description to this video in case anyone is interested um, I get a lot of questions about the app that runs on the mobile device to communicate with this drone. Um, this is not an app that I have written, it is not an Objective-C native app for iOS either. I am using the Touch OS C interface manager. So Touch OS C is an app available in both the Google Play App Store and the Apple App Store. You download it to your device, you create a layout on your computer, and then you sync it back to your device. Now, last time I made this video, Touch OSC did not have any support for Android devices that could use custom layouts, but they have now updated this, which is brilliant. Um, the app is $2.99 and gives you the same functionality as the iOS version does. So you can get access to the, the device's accelerometer, you can send over your custom layouts, and you ha can still send all your information to your wireless computer. Um, so to, to those people who ask how do you get the device to speak to your computer, there is a couple of libraries that need to go into your processing folder. Um, I will try and put a link to these either the direct files or a link to where you can get the files from and possibly a tutorial but it basically they go into your libraries folder of your processing application and you import them into your app and as long as your mobile device is on the same wireless network as your computer they should talk to each other okay right on to little features and glitches that I found throughout this build the main one that I ignored most of the time because I thought this was just my programming turns out to be a common fault. It, um, I was using software serial and the hardware serial ports together because I wanted to read data off and send data in um, over the USB and over the wireless chip. So I used both of those. Now there is a known problem where if you're using software serial at the maximum um, 15,200 baud rate and the same with the USB connection is you do get weird twitches and glitches and so for me in this project it gave me uh, all the motors weren't spinning up uniformly they were all powering up and powering down under their own uh, on their own which of course goes nowhere for stable flight and stable control so uh, the way I got around that is I've just stopped using the software serial library. I've been advised that there is now a new software serial library that resolves this, but I have not yet found it, and I've kind of worked everything out around it now, so I'm not using that. So, um, so anyone else that's wondering why you're getting weird twitching noises or, or the inconsistent behavior with your motors, it is most likely because the timer used in the software serial library is the same timer that's used for the hardware serial communications so one resets the other and if you're setting your say like I was your throttle over serial it, the motors are pretty much guessing on as to what they're getting um, just another quick note um, also prop balancing and motor balancing um, I confess to that I read lots about prop balancing but never actually did so and you know I cannot stress enough that yes you do actually need to balance it I, I just kind of thought well you know if I've got a little bit of vibration here it's okay you know I, I was just I was more concerned with trying to get it in the air but you know it all goes hand in hand balance your props balance your motors balance your motors first then balance your props and it will all go for more smoother flight because your IMU in the center here will not read as much vibrations the readings will be more consistent and it makes it easier for your PID to control the, the balancing um, it is the PID controller that I am currently holding up with uh, it's just trying to get it to stabilize 
itself but I'm hoping to get that cracked in the next few weeks um, so yeah so apologies I know that I said the next video should hopefully be some flight and some code but I haven't forgotten I am still going to be sharing my code and I do still stick to my word that I will have a video for everyone with flight um, it's just not as soon as I'd wanted it to be um, as as last time please do feel free to send me questions I love answering your questions as best I can I do try and get back to you as soon as I can um, and same as as tips that people have also come across you know if, if you found something that you think I might come across too please do let me know um, it's great uh, take care and I'll see you again soon bye bye